This morning, we're in the studio with Masagos Zukifli, who is the Minister for the Environment and Water Resources, as well as Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs. Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiat recently said that the values of what have, what have made the Malay Muslim community successful here in Singapore and that they will become increasingly important in meeting today's challenges, values so important. So how do you feel that the Malay Muslim community has evolved over the years? I would say we've been very uh, fortunate because for the longest time, even before we uh, became independent, our religious leaders, our community leaders, as well as political leaders have always been on the same page. And I think because we are aligned on what is good for the community and what is good for the country, um, we have been able to make many adjustments, uh, whether they come from religious leaders, community leaders, as well as political leaders, to ensure that as we progress, we also are consistent with what we like to live as Muslims and Malays in Singapore. Uh, Minister Masagos, uh, that's the thing about being in Asia, isn't it? It's all about values. If you could really drill it down to the values of the Malay Muslim community, what are these values? Well, the character building is part of what religion should be about. And this is the primary concern of our religious leaders. And what they have uh, taught us is that Islam must be practiced, understood in the context of the time and place where it is. And I think this has helped us a lot. Because if we were to take instructions or to look at uh, Islam from a just historical or from places where they are practiced as a majority, many of the, th- the kind of things that we want to do or we want to emulate will not be relevant, if not uh, disrupt, actually be, will be very disruptive in Singapore. And that's because that stand is also taken by our religious leaders and through an institution like MUIS has been able to corral them, unite them and to put them together on the same page. So although our religious uh, st- uh, leaders may have studied all over the world, when they come back, they come back and understand the context and readjust what they teach to the, our adherents here. Still Singaporeans at heart in that sense. Yeah, exactly. I mean, th- this is so. This is my next point. So, interestingly, uh, the Malay Muslim community in Singapore has its own distinct character, doesn't it? Absolutely, and I think this is something that's been praised, even by the Sheikh Al Azhar when he was here in Singapore. He said, "Singapore Muslims are actually a, a, a model for minorities around the world to understand." why they have to produce their own scholars okay. and be confident that the instructions and guidance given by these scholars are actually good for them. But apart from that, how else would you say our community here, our Malay Muslim community here is distinct from our neighbours, Malaysia, Indonesia, kind of similar, but how are we different? So while religion is very important and central to our character, and that also is why many Muslims, after they become more successful, they do give back. And that's part of our culture and our religion teachings. Uh, two other things are very important to, to give Muslim, Malay Muslim our distinctive identity. And they are competency, what you bring to the table. Uh, and you did not, and you do do that through education. And Mandaki has a lot of uh, uh, a contribution in that. As well as citizenry. Which means that character, uh, competence, as well as citizenry coming together makes the, make the Malay Muslims unique and a unique proposition as a minority and that at one, at one hand we are, we are unique in the, the way we are and, and the way we are proud to be but on the other hand we are also contributing and are with every Singaporean so this is how diversity works in Singapore so we are allowed to be diverse we are allowed to be different but we know where the common spaces are yeah. and where we must be with each other What would you like the trajectory of the success, the prosperity of the Muslim Malay community in Singapore to be in the future? Look, I think wherever we land, wherever we are going, we must always hold back, hold on to these three basic principles. Don't forget who we are because our character makes us unique. Our culture makes us unique. Do not abandon that. In the process, we must not uh, think that... uh, Progress and success comes from the sky. We have to work for it. And in Singapore, fundamentally, that comes through education and lifelong learning and 
keeping up your skills up to date. And at the same time, don't forget we are in this together. Mm-hmm. This is a very precious piece of land, a precious model that all of us are proud of and want to defend. And we like to show the world that, hey, come here, look at us. Maybe there's something you can learn. So you would say we're pretty much in the right direction then? I think we, uh, we can be quite dignified to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to, to put you on the spot with a personal question. This is a topic I've heard you talk about several times, and I know you're very passionate about it. So on the note of passion, what's the one thing you're most proud of personally with regard to the Malay Muslim community here in Singapore? I, I think this is the sense of self-determination, that uh, we want to be what we want to be and not let others tell us. Not even uh, our political leaders uh, can prescribe to us what we should be. We decide that ourselves. We must, we, and because we come to this realization, what is good for us is also good for the country and vice versa. We have been able to live uh, harmoniously with others, mm-hmm. uh, respectfully, and unlike in many places in the world where Muslims fight within each other just because they have differences in, in the way, they, in their ideology or the way they, they practice, it doesn't happen in Singapore. In fact, uh, in many places, uh, the Shias pray in, in Sunni mosques and uh, we are none the wiser. We don't know who they are. We don't know what they are. They don't bring out that differences among ourselves. In the same way too, when we're in school, we're at work, these things don't come out because these are the common spaces where these things should not come out. Food for thought this morning, huh? Yeah, very much. Um, but that's that's a that's a beautiful reminder, actually, of you know the oneness of everything. And it and it and it reminds me that we started this conversation about climate change. We were talking about an issue that unites everyone in the world, and it's wonderful to talk about that unity in the community. And maybe we confuse those values to fight these problems that we all face in the future as well. Absolutely, I always say that uh, there are two things uh, we we I wrote in fact. Uh, this eulogy, so to speak, when uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew passed away, I say that if you ever, if you ever had a chance to decide uh, to be born somewhere, and you know you're going to be born a minority or poor, pray to be born in Singapore. That is so it's true. So As a minority, yeah. that yes. is so true. Uh, Masago Sukifli, Minister for the Environment and Water Resources and Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs in the studio with us this morning. So thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. A special feature interview with Minister Masagos Zulkifli, Singapore's Minister of the Environment and Water Resources and Minister in Charge of Muslim Affairs on Money FM 89.3. Money FM 89.3.